Amen. Let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 tonight. The book of Proverbs there, about the middle of your Bible, uh, right after Psalm, the book of Proverbs here, and I'll read some scripture here this evening. And bring the message I felt like the Lord's laid on my heart, and hope it'll be a help to you tonight. Proverbs chapter 1, the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom, and to give you wisdom. If you want to be smart, read Proverbs. Amen. Read it again, 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 especially young people, and young men especially. The book of Proverbs, but it's for all of us. And these Proverbs are great principles uh, to live your life by. And uh, I want to look at this first chapter here tonight and look and show you some guys here in this first chapter. Look at Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 5. Look at verse 5. A wise man will hear. A smart guy right there, ain't it? Amen. And will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Now, look at verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That guy ain't too smart. He despises wisdom and instruction. Now look at verse 24. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand no man regarded. You set it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. There's another guy. I want to use those three verses of Scripture tonight. And I felt like the Lord put this on my heart the other day when I was praying about coming down here. And I want to preach on three types of Texans. Come on. Three types of Texans. You're going to see yourself in one of these three groups here tonight. Everybody in here is going to fit into one of these three. While I'm preaching, I want you to sit there and think, yeah, that's, that's me. I'm that one. I'm number one. I'm number two. I'm number... Uh, and you listen, and you hear what God has to say to you tonight. You ready? Now, I want to say, first of all, the first category here tonight I want to talk about is what we call those who will listen. The Bible said that first man there, a wise man will hear. You know the smartest person in here tonight? The wisest person in here tonight that will say, hey, you tell me what God said, preacher. I'm ready to listen. Amen. He'll listen. Amen. He'll listen. He, he will listen. The Bible is not to make your life miserable. How many people you know say, well, I, I'm just having too much fun. I ought to go to church. I ain't going to church. I, I'm having, I, like, listen, the Bible's not given to make you miserable. It's given to protect you. Yeah. Uh, like you put a fence around your house to keep your dog in. He thinks you're being mean to him. You're keeping a fool from getting run over out there in the road. And it's for his good and benefit that you build that fence. That's the way the Lord does. I read about a young uh, uh, lady down in Florida that got saved when she was young. She got saved, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 like that. And she made up her mind she's going to live for God. She went to every church service. She listened to all the preaching. She heard every word the preacher said. That girl grew up. And uh, she was in, in a public high school of 1,700 students, carried a Bible to school every day. And wasn't ashamed of it. She, she was uh, head of the home economic class, led the devotions at her high school, and for three years carried a Bible to school. She lived right. They thought, they, you know, she was a nerd. She was made silly, boring. You know, no, she ain't no fun. That's why the other kids looked at her. That girl is now married to a good man of God, and they are serving the Lord together. Amen. She listened. That girl listened. We used to have two, uh, the girls come to our church, and there was four of them. There were sisters. And our church at that time, there was pew, pews here and pews here. We had four sections of them. And they'd sit right here on this second row uh, of seats. One girl who was the oldest one in the family, she would sit there just like this with her Bible open. It didn't matter who was preaching. It didn't matter who was teaching. She just like this. Just, I mean, just eating it up. Uh, just every word just soaking it in. The other, her, her younger sister, who was, was prettier, a lot prettier than she was, uh, that's a curse, you know. Yeah, come on. 
It's really bad to be really pretty or really ugly. And, and but, but, but the Lord, I mean, you, it'll cause you to take all kinds of bad risk. Uh, but anyway, she, uh, her sister was really pretty, and she, all she did was flirt the whole church service. She didn't like, turn around and talk to this boy, turn around and talk to that boy, uh, cutting up, laughing, writing notes. Like that. The older sister would sit there and listen. The older sister, I don't think, even had a boyfriend or got, had on a date, had a date till she's probably 19 or 20 years old. Nothing wrong with that, right? right. And uh, our younger sister, by the time she was 14, brother, they was hanging around her uh, like flies. And uh, she was, uh, and, and she loved it. She was eating it up. And as time went on, you know, we, I watched those, those kids grow up. And they grew up, and they grew up. And that, I'd seen that one girl sit there, dressed real nice and pretty, and sit there with her Bible and nodding her head like that. And uh, she, I know she was lonely. I know she'd like to have a, a social life. I know she would have liked to have been popular, or maybe had a boyfriend, or at least some friends to go out with. She didn't. She sat right there, never missed a service, worked in the bus ministry, went visiting on Saturdays, uh, uh, helped kids come to the Lord, come to church. Her sister sat there. First thing you know, she got messed up with this guy, the little sister did. She got off and uh, got married, wound up having a kid. Uh, they would moved off. He, he wound up hitting her, and they got, they got in a big fight, and uh, she, she uh, wound up going through a divorce, some awful bad stuff. Her older sister that I'm telling you about, she sat there and listened, and one day, a young man came into church, and that boy came in, I think it was on Sunday night, I'll never forget the, uh, the service we had that night. He came over on this side and got down in the altar and got saved. And it wasn't, wasn't long at all. Wasn't long at all. Uh, he was called to preach. He, he was, go, he was do, doing work for God. Wasn't long at all. Till they began, hey, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? And, you know, a little bit back and forth. Look at me. Wasn't long at all. Till it blossomed into that. Blossomed into that. That's been about 30 years ago now. And right now, tonight, while you are sitting here tonight in this church, that girl is in Romania with her husband serving God. They got about three or four kids. They've won thousands or influenced thousands of people toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The other girl has just had one problem right after another. You know what her th you know what she did? She'd listen. She would listen. She was as blessed as the church member who will listen. I'm talking to every one of us tonight. Listen, it doesn't matter what that pastor preaches on on Sunday morning. Determine in your heart, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen because if he's prayed and he's been with God and the Lord's put something on his heart, there's something in there for you. I mean, there's something supernatural about preaching. And not a preacher, but preaching under the power of the Holy Ghost. There's some, there's some, I mean, there's, uh, preaching will get more done than anything in this world uh, when God is in it just right. She would listen. She would listen. Listen, if you'll listen, you'll never become an alcoholic. Uh, you'll never become an alcoholic if you'll listen and not take the first drink, right? If you don't take a drink, you can't become an alcoholic. If you don't smoke a joint or shoot the, uh, put the first needle in your arm, you'll never become a drug addict. You know, to have a happy, blessed life, Listen. Be one that'll listen. Make up your mind. I'm going to listen. But the Bible said, a wise man will hear. Don't ever think you've arrived and you've got to the point. I've met people like that. They think, I don't, I don't need to listen to anybody else anymore. You ever met anybody like that? Uh, preachers are bad for that. They get the big head and it goes, somebody bragged on them and they believed it. And they, and they, uh, and they get to thinking, well, you can't teach me nothing. Well, uh, you need to go in the nursery, son. Uh, and get back there and take a pacifier for a little while because there ain't no graduates walking around down here. We are all students of the Word of God. There ain't no such thing as a Bible scholar. No such thing. A scholar is somebody who's mastered the subject. Right. Ain't nobody mastered that yet. We're all students, right? We're all learning. And ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, if he puts a 10-year-old kid up here that's called to preach, you better listen to that kid because God's got something for you today. That's a, what type are you? Type one, those that'll listen. Type two. There's a second type of Texan that I guessed before I got here. <laughs> Those who will not listen. Uh, 
You got anybody like that around here? Absolutely will not listen. Lord have mercy. The Bible said in verse 7 there, but fools despise the wisdom and instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, there, there's, there are people in our church and all over the world that will not listen. Amen. And look at the mess it gets them into. You know, you want to get in a mess, just say, I know it all. Ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. Preacher ain't going to tell me, run my life. I'll make my own decision. Yeah, yeah you just keep, see where that gets you. Uh, yeah, listen, you ain't going to beat God, buddy. Uh, you ain't going to beat him at all. I know a boy back home right now, when he's about that high, uh, he, he got a whipping every time, every time going to church, coming back from church. Uh, his mom, he, he's a rough kid. He really wasn't her. She sort of adopted him. And he's mean as a snake. And she'd, and I'd be behind him going to church. And she'd stop at a red light, reach back, bam! Hit him, the, hit him in the back seat. Like that. You know, that ain't the right way to do it. Uh, my daddy said that kid been hit more than Joe Lewis. Uh, but uh, he said, uh, uh, he, he grew up, he grew up and he got in trouble and they put him in a Christian school. He is in, he is in church every time the doors is open and just as soon, he'd sit in the back like this and talk to other boys like that. Just as soon as church was over, he's out the door. Just as soon as he got old enough, he started drinking beer. Just as soon as he got half a chain, he was gone. To this day, he's probably 50 years old now, or pushing 50. To this day, right now, every time you see him, he's got a black eye. One of his side of his face swelled up. Cops brought him to my house one night. Policeman said, he wants to stay with you. And I was getting ready to go preach a revival some more. And I said, man, I got kids in here. I, I can't just leave him here with my kids here. And I, I was, and uh, he He's in jail, out of jail, in jail, out of jail, in jail. He's like the verse over there that says, uh, they beat me and I failed it not. Uh, you know, and, but I'm going to go seek it again. I mean, uh, there's some people that just absolutely will not listen. Right. Now, I'll tell you what you better do. You better make up your mind. When you come to church, you act like you're the only person here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sit there and say, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had people tell me that. I preached for them. People got up and said, Boy, preacher, you told, I wish those so and so would have been here and heard that. Some people just, I guarantee you, these people sitting right in here tonight, somehow or another, you think this is not really for you. You're just, you're just here and all, and it's all right, but it's not really. That, that, that's going to get you in a lot of trouble. Amen. You won't listen. Amen. You will not listen. Yeah, you better listen. You better listen. You know how come people's on drugs? They won't listen. You know what people get, to, how come get people in trouble? They will not listen. Amen. You know why people get locked up for uh, crimes? They will not listen to God and what God said. Just will not do it. I, I know, uh, I heard an uh, illustration. Preacher, one time, uh, the preacher had a guy in his church and the guy was really, really doing some bad stuff. I don't know what it was, but it was, it was really awful. And the preacher found out about it. And he preached everything he knew, knew, and it didn't do no good. And one Sunday morning, the preacher, he sort of got in the flesh a little bit, like preachers can do sometimes. We ain't perfect sometimes. And, uh, and he preached right to that guy. I mean, right. I mean, he, I mean, he, it was obvious who he was talking about. You know, every, I mean, you could tell. And that ain't right. We ain't supposed to do that. But you know what I'm saying. He, uh, sometimes a preacher, you're supposed to just take like a shotgun and go boom, you know, just let it hit wherever it's going to hit. But boy, he, he put the deer rifle on that dude. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it was like, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not naming no names, uh, but these people that sit on the front row uh, with their little black suits on and their, their little blue, I'm, I'm not calling nobody's name. Uh, you know, it's like that. <laughs> and uh, boy, I'm telling you, he got it off his chest. And when he got through, everybody's coming out the door, coming out the door. One man said, preacher, I really enjoyed that. Man, that helped me so much. Yeah, you, I felt like you was talking right to me. Next guy came out, preacher. I don't know how you knew it, but he said, boy, you, everything, pre, everything you said was right to me. Thank you. So next fellow come out, pre, you must have been at my house peeping in the window because preacher, everything you said uh, applies to me. I just can't believe it. And he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Finally, that fellow come out. And when he come out, he shook his hand. He said, I'll tell you what, preacher, that was good. You told them today, buddy. <laughs> Now, you know what? There ain't no hope for somebody like that. There's no hope for a person that will not 
listen. That will not listen. You got them around here. I'll guarantee it. You got them. I'll guarantee you. Everybody here's got some in your family. They ain't listening. I have a, um, a cousin, my cousin Shana. She grew up in church. She, she got messed around, got messed up and got in some trouble when she was about 16 or 17. Some boy at school got her smoked dope or something and she wound up getting on drugs real bad. And uh, she in church, out of church, in church, out of church. And not long ago, my, her sister called me and uh, she said, Brother Danny, she said, I need you to go, the, will you please go to the hospital and see Shana? I said, what's wrong with her? And she began to tell me what was wrong with her. So me, uh, me and my wife went to Asheville, to, uh, uh, to the hospital, big hospital over there in Asheville, to visit her. We walked in that room. There she lay in the hospital bed and her, her leg was split from here to here and just like, Looked like you busted a watermelon. And I mean, they tried to put, put it back together. Where she, she'd stuck needles in her, in her uh, you know, they, you get some points where you can't get no more needles in yarn because you can't find a vein, right? And they'll stick them between their toes or anywhere just trying to find a vein to put that drug in their body. And I walked in and I saw her laying there like that and I said, Shana, what in the world is wrong with you? She said, I don't know, Brother Danny. She, I'm her cousin. She calls me Brother Danny. I was a pastor for, for all her life growing up. She said, I don't know, Brother Danny. I said, Shana, do you know, you know what? You're going to die. You know, you know that, right? I mean, you can't have 75 people in front of you going out that door right there, fall off a cliff, 74. Next one, fall off a cliff, 73. Next one, fall off a cliff, 72. And you're going right along. You know what's going to happen to you? You're going to fall off a cliff. Every drug addict, every alcoholic, they all think, no, I got this. I'm not like all the rest of them. No, you're just in line like all the rest of them. You can't handle it. I can't handle it. He can't handle it. Nobody can't handle it. You know what the problem is? They will not listen. The devil's got them convinced. They think, I'm different. I've got this figured out. I can sneak around and sin and nobody don't know it. And I've, I've got a handle on this. No, no, you're not either. You're making a fool out of yourself. I said, Shana, you know you're going to die, right? It's going to kill you. You're 30-something years old and you're going to die. She looked awful. And she said, oh, you know, they sort of jerked like that. She said, I don't know. I said, where's that guy at? She's living with some guy. He's in jail. And what is he doing in jail? She, he hit her in the back back with a hammer. And it was in the newspaper and everything. I said, he hit you with a hammer. I said, you're not going to go back to him, right? She said, well, he's got his issues. I said, I reckon he does. Man, hit you in the back of that with a hammer? You know what he'll do? He's going to kill you. Are you crazy? And it's just like talking to that chair right there. Right. They harden their heart. They refuse instruction. Yeah. They will not listen. As far as I know, Shana's still messed up. Does cocaine, crack cocaine, heroin, about anything she can get her hands on. You know why this drug business is absolutely destroying our nation tonight? Because people refuse to listen to what God said. I mean, they refuse. They just say, I'm smarter than that. I don't believe that. Don't, don't tell me about that. Well, I'll tell you something. If God said not to do something, He's got your best interest at heart, buddy. He ain't trying to hurt you. He's got your best interest at heart. I heard about these guys who, uh, who uh, they was out one night and then they decided to play a trick, these, these guys, people in this house, and they took all the trash in their house. And I mean, they emptied the trash can, they put in their old coffee grounds and banana peelings and old mixed up old biscuits and, and all them baby diapers and everything else and wrapped it off in a big old box and wrapped it up real pretty and put a Christmas bow on it and about that big and set it out on the front porch. Bad neighborhood. They went in the house, flipped the light switches off, and sat there and watched. Sure enough, sure enough, for in a few minutes, here come a car down the road. <laughs> Backed up. These boys got out and looked around. Let's <laughs> got over there. Got that, got that box, put it in the trunk, and boom, took off. What do you think they felt like when they opened that gift they got? 
That's the way sin is. Amen. That's the way sin is. Yeah. Sin paints a pretty picture, people. Sin paints a pretty picture. Boy, it don't. It ain't what it's cracked up to be. Yeah. It ain't what it's cracked up to be. Right. These guys, another guy went in there. They broke in somebody's house, and they're gonna steal everything. They got the jewels and the stuff that's valuable and stuff. You know, all the woman's jewelry and all the silverware that was nice and whatever they could find, you could carry out. And uh, they was on, they'd been on drugs, you know, and everything. And one of them saw a little uh, 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 thing, a container of powder there on the t coffee table, and it said Charlie on it. And Charlie, you know, the, the name was C, street name for cocaine. And one of them said, oh, oh yeah, we got it. And they got that, and they took it out, put it in their bag, got a little extra bonus there, robbing that house. Them guys took that out there. They're dividing the spoils, and they're saying, you get this much money, you get that much, you get the diamond ring, you get that. And they said, man, get that crack out here. And they started out, and there was, and they was got these straws and stuff, and they put that down trying to sniff, you know, snort it up their nose. And they, did, they didn't realize that that family had had a big old dog named Charlie, and, uh, and it died and they had it cremated. And them idiots was sucking dead dog bones up their nose trying to get high. You say, that's the stupidest people I've ever heard. It ain't as stupid as somebody suck real cocaine up their nose. Right? Listen, you won't listen. They will not listen. I tell you, these guys went out, true story. They said they, they'd go out into these RV parks, you know, and cipher the gas out of them RVs to, uh, to, to steal gas, you know. We, yeah, how many of y'all know what ciphering hose is? And you're going, okay, Dad, Daddy used to do that when he was little. Back when we was growing up, you know, if, you, if the lawnmower needed gas, you ciphered it out of the truck. <laughs> you, didn't have, you didn't have a special can for it or anything like that. But uh, if it's something in the can, you poured it in the truck. Uh, but anyway, uh, they'd go out there and they'd go in these RV parks and sop the gas out in these cans and they'd take it and sell it, make money off of it. And they was out there doing it one night. They was out there, look, this way, that way, that way. And one old boy never did come back, never did come back, never did come back. And they got to looking for him. And they went down there and he was in the grass laying there like this. And he was green. I mean, that poor old fellow, he was so sick he couldn't move. Laying there like that. He, what he'd, he'd, he'd stuck that hose in the wrong container. In that, in that RV. <laughs> you're a little slow, but you're coming on now. You're coming on a little. You're a little slow, but you're getting it one at a time. And that, that sucked that sewage down in there, and he's about to die. You say, what's that, preacher? That's rap music. That's what that is. Rap music does the same thing to your soul as that sewage did to his body. Yeah, right? Yeah. Sure does. Sure does. Amen. I mean, Eminem. Up sewage, sewage. Go in and just lick the commode while you're listening to that. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. It's sewage. But you won't listen. Some of you won't listen. I don't care what he says. I still like it. Well, you're getting sewage on your soul, buddy. You're getting sewage on your soul. They absolutely will not listen. Will not listen. Will not listen. Every time you get a speeding ticket, get another speeding ticket. I get locked up. Get another locked up. Get in a fight. Get in another fight. Uh, get a, a DUI. Get another DUI. Uh, get charges filed against them. Restraining order. One thing after another after another, after another, will not listen. You will save yourself a lot of trouble if you say, you know what? I, I, can't, I can't understand these people say, well, as I may say, have you ever been drunk? I say, no, I haven't. Well, don't knock it till you've tried it. Everybody may mean like, oh yeah, don't criticize if you ain't tried. Have you ever laid your head in front of one of them tractor and trailers out there going down the interstate? <laughs> don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, stupid. You don't have to try every stupid thing the world's got to offer. You don't have to watch every dirty movie that comes out of Hollywood. You don't have to let that, that filth go in your head. You don't have to look at that trash on your phone. You don't have to look at all them dirty pictures and them dirty videos. Hey, listen to what God said. You'll be a whole lot of hell. Better off. I said that's number one group. Them that listen. That's a small group. Number two, them that won't listen. There's a third type of Texan. Man, I started preaching at five after seven. It's still five after seven. <laughs> I don't really preach long. Y'all must need it bad. 
Uh, there's a third type of Texan here tonight. And that's the ones that wish they'd have listened. They wish they'd have listened. And the jails is full of them. I got a phone call the other day. Boy in jail in Louisiana. He's in jail for murdering a cop. He swears up and down that it was an accident and circumstance. He may be telling the truth. I don't know. He has since got his life right with God. He is in life and maybe on death row. He called me. We discussed Bible. He snuck a phone in there somehow or another and he gets to use it once in a while and he calls me and we talk about Bible and he asks me Bible questions and we have, we have good conversation and all that. And, and you know what? He says, I wish I'd listen. I wish I'd listen. You know what, kids? You can go out here and mess around and do some stuff that you can't undo. Amen. You can cross some lines you can't uncross. Amen. Right. You can do some things you can't undo. You can, do, you can say some things you can't take back. Yes, sir. You can do something in five minutes. I read about a young man who was like I was talking about a minute ago. He, he wanted to go to a rock concert. And his mother would not let him go. And, she, and he said, I'm going. She said, no, you're not. She said, I'll take the keys. You're not, I'm not taking you nowhere. You're not going. That boy got so mad. He went into his bedroom, put his headphones on like that, you know, and just started doing like that, jamming that hard music. And when he did, uh, a demonic spirit entered into him and got a hold of him. Now, I'm sure you've heard me, you've heard me preaching all. I believe, I believe that music is like opening that door right there yeah, to yeah. demonic spirit. Right. You know why we sing when we first come in here? It pulls in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's not just a formality. It gets the right spirit in here. Yeah. The right spirit, the right kind of music pulls in the right kind of spirit. Yeah. And the wrong kind of music pulls in the wrong kind of spirit. Yeah. You can change the whole atmosphere of a place right. just by different types of music. And y'all know that. Amen. You might act dumb, but you know deep down inside that that's true. That's it changes doing. everything. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. And he went and he got under that and a spirit entered into him. The way to get demon possessed is kick your brain in neutral. And the way to kick your brain in neutral is get in a passive state of mind like rhythm. Boom, boom. Boom. Yoga, meditation, meditating, just zoning out, tripping out, sex, drug, and rock and roll. That's what they say. Yeah. All three of them things. Any one of them three is an open door. Just like you open that door, snakes come in here. That's exactly what comes into your mind and heart when you, uh, when you do that. And he was laying there, and a spirit got in that boy, and he, he, said, he said, just go kill her. Just go kill her. Just go kill her. So he goes into the, under control of that spirit, goes into the bedroom, pulls open the drawer and reaches under there and gets his daddy's pistol. And his mom is sitting in there in the living room. He come up behind her like that and put that pistol behind her and blew her brains out all over the floor. And then he sat down. They called the cops. Cops came, took him to the police station. They took him to the police station and set him down in there. And they set him down in that police station and they take him into one of them little rooms, you know, where a detective arrange you, you know, they set you in there and drill you, try to get a confession and all of that. And uh, he said, man, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with that boy? It's just hard. And about that time, that demonic spirit left him. You see, that's what the devil will do to you. He'll put something in front of you. It looks good to get you to do it. And then after you do it, he'll run off and leave you to fight it out for yourself. You have to deal with it and pay the cost. Yes, and that boy started crying. And they said a preacher came. And the preacher came down the hall. Somebody called the preacher. And the preacher said he's coming down the hall. He could hear that boy screaming back there in the back saying, Mama, Mama, I wish, can't we just go back? Mama, can't we just go back? Mama, can't we just go back? I didn't mean to. Mama, I'm sorry. Please, can't we just go back? You can't go back. You can't go back. He wished you to listen. He wished he to listen. Listen, people. This thing right here ain't no joke. This is the inspired words of God Almighty. If you sit there and turn your ear, if you walk out of here tonight, you're in trouble here. You done caught now. 
You're done responsible for what I'm saying tonight. If you walk out that door and say, I don't care what he says, I'm going to do that, you're messing up big time. Because you ain't dumb no more. It's good. Or as dumb. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, people, I, I, they, they, there's a lot that wish they'd listen. Amen. Amen. The girl's come in my office, and she got a little baby on this side and a little toddler right here. And she said, Brother Danny, now I ain't got no, we're about ready to get kicked out of our trailer. I said, Where's he at? I don't know. He took off with some other, he broke my heart, Brother Danny. But I wish I'd listen. I wish I'd listen. And everybody tried to tell her. Everybody tried to tell her, but no, sir. Romeo done talked her right off her feet, and she messed up. Now she don't know where he is. She's having raised two kids by herself, no groceries, getting ready to cut the electricity off. You know why? She's now saying now, I wish I'd listen. And I will tell you this, I'm through tonight. The people in hell tonight wish they'd have listened. You believe in hell? You believe the Bible, you believe there's a hell, right? Yeah, you know why we go soul winning? It ain't for popularity contest, brother. Yeah, I mean, you get cussed out, door slammed in your face, yeah, everything else. You know why we go soul winning? Because there's a hell! Yeah, if there wasn't a hell, we wouldn't bother with it. Yeah, Bow right. your feet tonight. There is a blistering, burning inferno where people are screaming and begging God for another chance to get out. And it's too late. They wish they had to listen, but they didn't. Amen. I heard a story. I'm going to relate this story to you like it was told to me. A man in Ohio worked in a chemical factory. And in this chemical factory, they developed chemicals to keep stuff completely dry. And you, well, astronauts or something. And you know how even you buy, you buy uh, vitamins or something, it'll have a little thing in there, a little thing it's supposed to, Keep moisture out, like whatever that stuff is. It, it was like it was like super duper 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 that. It was extremely rare, like gunpowder. And it and you could take it. It was it made everything dry. And if water, a drop of water, hit that gunpowder like stuff, it would just explode. It would ignite, turn into a fire, like striking match to gas. Well, they played around, and that guy said, "I'm gonna take me some of that stuff home." He got a little, little uh, bottle of it about that big. And uh, he took it home. And he said, man, that's cool, man. I want to play with that one these days. He took it upstairs and put it down up in his drawer. And one night about two or three months later, he had a party at his house. And a bunch of people was over there having a big party. And they was all over there. And they was all drinking, you know. And everybody was laughing. And, and he, the party was hit a little lull there. And it was all about half drunk. And he was too, you know, and everything. And all of a sudden, he thought about it. I know what I'll do. I'm going to go up there and get that stuff and, 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 and we're going to have some fun with it. So he goes up there. He couldn't remember where he put it. Finally found it in a drawer, brought it down the and he said, hey, why don't y'all come in here in a minute? He goes in the kitchen sink and uh, runs about that much water in the sink like that. And he stopped it up, called everybody in there, and they all crowd around and said, hey, watch this. And he took just a little bitty bit of that stuff, just a little dust particles. And he went, and it went, a flame shot up about that high. They all jumped back. They went, whoa, yeah, cool. That's the neatest thing. Ever. How'd you do that? And they was all laughing and pushing around on each other. You know, lots of bunch of drunks around a party. And, and they're all sitting around in there. And he said, do it again. Do it again, man. That's cool. So he takes his finger and goes like this. And he goes, boom, don't let him It went, like a torch just shot up like that. And they laughed and cut up. And he said, all right, everybody back. Back up, back up. They all backed up. And he said, watch out. And he went like that. And he, he staggered and stumbled. And when he did, he, he fell over like this. And his sink caught him about right here. And the whole cylinder of that stuff went in that water. And when that stuff hit that water, they said there was a, it sounded like a bomb went off. There was an explosion that blew up in his face and it got in him, blew that chemical in him, face, neck, down to right here, all over him. 
And they said he come up like this. Fire was coming off of him and out of him. People screamed. They went and got a blanket. Of course, he passed out after about two seconds of that. And he was uh, rolling around in the floor. They wrapped him up in blankets. They called, uh, they called the ambulance. They rushed him to the hospital. They said they took him in the hospital, took him in the emergency room. And there was doctors. And they didn't know what was wrong with him. And they said uh, they, they, put, they put him down on a, on a table like this. And they said... Uh, they was, they was uh, working on him there, and his face was like sizzling, like bacon in a pan, just popping, like grease popping out of his face and neck. The fire, it was in him, sizzling, like frying bacon in a pan. And he said in a few minutes, his eyes got about that big, and he raised up in that bed, and he said, I'm in hell! Help me! I'm in hell! He passed out again like that right there. Fell back down. They said they worked on him a few more minutes there. They didn't know what to do. They'd never seen nothing like that. They said the doctor was trying to get some gauze. They was trying to put medication on it and everything. And a nurse took, a, took some gauze and dipped it in water. And they said when she went like that and just wiped it across his forehead like that. And they said a blue flame just shot right out of his head. Straight up in the air like that right there. And he stood up, he sat up again. His eyes would look like a, a maniac. He said, I'm in hell. I'm in hell. Somebody help me. Fell over dead like that. That guy probably went to hell. And he's there tonight, probably. If he didn't call on the Lord. If he didn't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, which... More than likely, he did not. Right now, he's in hell tonight. Saying, I wish I'd have listened. Mm -hmm. He probably had some warnings down through life. Yeah. You know, I'd never met this man until today. It ain't no accident that I'm here. Amen. This is not just, sir. like he said, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Nobody's traveling. God sent me here Amen. to tell you this. Amen. He wished he'd have listened. And there's millions of them. If you're still alive here tonight, uh, you need to make up your mind. I'm going to listen. I'm not going to be one of them people that wish that I listen or will not listen. I'm going to listen. I want you to bow your head, please, and close your eyes. The pastor's going to come. Close the invitation, however the Lord leads him tonight.